Hey everyone, Guardian E here with another live reaction and first impression video for Fire Emblem Heroes. Tonight we are apparently getting the reveal of the next set of new heroes to get dropped into the game. Very unusual for a Saturday. They've done this twice in a row now, really. Um, where they really have tried to stray away from doing so. Kind of messes with my schedule a bit, but that's alright. We're going to go ahead and watch the trailer together for the first time, react. We know it's going to be a midpoint banner. We knew it was coming, um, and it's probably going to have a mythic hero along the way probably not since we already have dagger um and then yeah we'll see who else is accompanying her so let's get right into it watch the trailer together for the first time i'll look up wait for the title to leave and now new heroes join the battle and oh kind eldest sister paula wait another paula is this valentia paula oh it is she looks great. I'm a huge fan of Paula. Lady Blade, huh? Red Dual Flying Four. That that's uh, that's a tempting prospect. Okay. Hey, we're getting a new Paula. I'm all about that. Is it gonna be Valentia themed? Past unknown. It seems like it really is. Now, what are what are they gonna go with? Then, yeah, Zeke. Okay. That does make sense. It's it's interesting because like they're picking Valentia units that aren't just from Valentia. <laughs> Uh, Holy Gradivus, Lull Attack Defense 3. Do not think badly of me. Nice. Alright. Who's going to round it out? Odd Wayfarer. Okay. I am Luffy, a student of magic. I'm, I'm sure that there are going to be some happy people out there to see Luthier in the game. So uh, That is going to be a 4-star focus unit, that's for sure. But Swiss Bear 2 available as a 4-star focus? Don't underestimate me. That's pretty exciting. I am kind of underestimating you, I'm sorry. Okay, Mythic Hero. Is it not? Oh, yep, fact, yeah, okay, yeah, of course, of course. Moon's Elegance, it is going to be not very exciting, which does mean that you will be able to get her guaranteed with the sparking system. So pretty neat. Cream Faxi, Moon Twin Wing, Attack Speed Menace. Dragon Fang, okay. Oh, that attacking art's so cool. And of course the animation is always neat for the uh, the giants. You offend me. I gotta say, of the two, honestly, Dagger is my favorite. Um, so, but anyway. A new story chapter, Serpent's Whispers. Uh, so again, this is going to be the midpoint, so it is going to be kind of a turning point for the uh, the actual story anybody getting revealed here doesn't look like it um oh wait no th that blue tome user is tatiana right from valentia I, so we're gonna get her for free which is pretty awesome because uh tatiana is really cool obviously in tandem makes a lot of sense debuting with zeke here uh getting paula getting luthier that's that's and not not of course that is pretty cool um all right so midpoint and more uh, I think the rest of it is just going to be the sparking system, right? I'm just going to check to make sure there's nothing crazy here. And the Celestial Stone, right. Makes sense, of course. So starting on the 8th of June, uh, and then probably going for a full three months, I would I would wager. Luthier is going to be the four-star focus unit of the banner. That's pretty darn exciting. Again, getting a Mythic Hero guaranteed is, um, is not something to be underestimated. That has a lot of inherent value, so I, I think that generally speaking... It's probably worth going to the sparking. Um, I was mentioning that you know of the of the sisters, dagger is my favorite. I kind of wish that dagger had been the uh, the freebie for the midpoint, but um, the way the story lines up, looks like we're going to be getting not. All right, let's rewind, take a very very brief look at their skills and their art, just to see if this is a banner that I think is ultimately worth summoning for. Kind eldest sister, I'm actually pretty darn excited. Tefish did an amazing job on this Pala art. I think she looks fantastic here. Alright, so let's take a look at Lady Blade. I already see that it has Kanto built into it. Uh, inflict speed minus 5. That's, uh, okay, so it's going to be a brave weapon. Uh, unit attacks twice. Even if foe initiates combat, unit attacks twice. So it's brave on both phases. Calculates damage using the lower of foe's defense or res. Really? It has adaptive damage? An adaptive damage brave weapon? That's, that's 
pretty damn good. After an attack, assist skill, or structure destruction, unit can move two spaces. So it's just a built-in Kanto. I mean, that's just incredible utility all around. I mean, having a brave weapon on both faces is pretty, pretty decent. Uh, regardless, but but the the adaptive damage and the Kanto is really the interesting elements here that kind of set her apart from other Brave Sword users. Attack, uh, defense plus rally, uh, grants attack, defense plus six to target ally for one turn. That's fine. Dual plus rally. So red dual flying four. So we get the tier four of the red dual flying skills, which is honestly uh, pretty great. I mean, again, the the fourth tier of the dual skills are are pretty decent because they do give stats um, across the board to the unit as well as fiddle around with the arena scoring which is a, an inherently flawed system um so this might be honestly for me worth getting just so i can have it on a drift camilla for example uh, attack res rain three uh, inflicts attack res minus four on foes within two spaces during combat that's pretty fantastic and it's really interesting because she's a sword user, but she's still going to take advantage of the attack res rain three because her lady blade has adaptive damage. Um, so really fascinating. Um, I, I, yeah, that's just very interesting indeed. I think she's going to be a fun unit to use. And here's her attacking art. Very dynamic. I really like it. I mean, of course, she's a white wing. Uh, she's beautiful. She has the the you know the signature short skirt with the front flap, uh, and then she's just swinging for the fences here. Uh, she's ready to double double tap, take him out. That's great. And then you get the Kanto at the end of it. That is solid. So super good. Okay, so past unknown we know is past, but he doesn't know is past. So this is going to be Zeke. So an interesting take on Camus certainly looks uh, dignified. I think, I think they did a great job. He doesn't look quite as bulky as his other incarnation uh, in the game, uh, in, in Heroes, I guess. Um, but but it, I, I, you know, that doesn't make him look any less imposing. I like how uh, there are all of kind of the trappings of his outfit, uh, as well as the embroidery down on the uh, the front of his uh, front of his coat. So pretty nice. And we can see what his skills are. So Holy Gradivus uh, has distant counter built into it. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, unit makes a guaranteed follow-up attack. Honestly, that is that is short and sweet. Very, very simple, but very, very solid at the same time. D built in distant counter, plus having the ability to uh, have a guaranteed follow-up on both phases as long as he's above a certain health threshold. That's solid. I mean, that just makes him useful. To, his speed his speed doesn't even matter um, unless you have, you're facing up against somebody with null follow-up. So um, that those two elements built in, pretty darn good. Bonfire, uh, attack, defense, catch four at start of combat. If foe's HP is 100% or penalty is active on foe, grants attack defense plus seven to unit during combat. And at start of combat, if both of those are in play and active on foe, grants an additional attack defense plus two on unit during combat. So very easy to meet the plus seven. Uh, and then, you know, a little extra push. And even with some planning, you can pretty easily meet the plus nine. So being able to reach plus nine for both of those as in combat buffs are very strong. Lull attack defense three, um, super solid, super, super solid. Just debuffs attack defense to minus three and then also neutralizes activated buffs defense res menace three so we are seeing more of the menace skills i think the menace skills really have a solid place in fire emblem heroes and so i am glad to see more of them making an appearance at start of turn if unit is within four spaces of the foe inflicts defense res minus six on closest foes through their next action and grants defense res plus six to unit for one turn so yeah, I mean, again, I think the fact that this is kind of a successor to the threatened skills and really kind of better in almost every way, I would say, um, just because that additional range makes a huge, huge difference as far as the debuff is concerned. So nothing about Camus or, or Zeke here really blows me away. Depending on his stat line, I think he's going to be a huge tank as if we as if we needed more uh, cavalry lance tanks out there um but uh it, it certainly seems like he is going to fit that to a bill um he's gonna have some pretty pretty high defenses and probably a pretty high attack and have a guaranteed follow-up attack so it's it's okay it, it's pretty it's pretty good but certainly not sort of not blowing anybody away or shaking you know shaking the meta or anything all right zeke looks pretty cool here not gonna lie i mean i think 
it's kind of weird that he has his back turned to us. I, and even though he's kind of leaping forward, you don't really get the same sense of motion. Like from his hair, for example, it's pretty static. Um, the energy that's kind of flowing off of the spear almost looks like, it's almost like a sand effect. It's pretty good. I'm not in love with it, but yeah, it's it's decent, especially for the special art. I feel like it'd be a little more dynamic, but um, odd wayfarer. We've got Luthier here. So Luthier is going to be a an infantry green tome user. Like I said, he is going to be the four star focus unit of the banner. I think his art looks actually fantastic, especially for a four star focus unit. Like you can even see with a gradient in his hair and how. It like it's it almost resembles a flame like with how it goes from the yellows to the oranges to the reds. You know the rest of his outfit has those those deep brown hues and then extends into the orange as well. Um, obviously he's a very good looking guy. Um, he's got the the long flowing locks on each side. He's got his arm extended. Um, yeah, he looks good. Looks good. We'll have to see exactly what. Uh, what he's bringing to the table. I, I we saw that he had Swift Sparrow too, so that's always good. Grand Fox Plus? Okay, you know, it's about time that we got a Grand Fox Plus. This is our first time having it. It's 12 Might Inheritable Green Tome. Uh, if you need to initiate combat, grants plus, uh, minus four to all stats of the foe during combat. It's solid. As a player phase, as far as player phase tomes go, uh, Fox Blades? Or, uh, Fox Blades. Fox Tomes are not bad. Glimmer for the special. It's fine. Uh, Swiss Sparrow 2, so obviously it's it, him being player phase oriented. Naturally, that synergizes with Gron Fox. But having it available, and I'm wondering if it is available at 4 star or if it's going to be at 5 star. Um, but essentially, plus 4 to attack and speed. Um, not bad, especially you know, using it as a stepping stone to get Swiss Sparrow 3. And then guard 3 for the B slot. Eh, start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 80%. Uh, inflict special cooldown charge minus one on foe during attack. So despite it being one of the, uh, you know, a, a, a skill from the very beginning of the game, Guard 3 is actually um, still very useful just because it has no inheritance restrictions. You can basically put it on anybody. Um, and that's a very powerful thing, especially it's situational, but it's very powerful to have the ability to neutralize an enemy's um, cooldown gain for their special. I, I really think that about now it's, it's probably time to introduce Guard 4. Um, they probably didn't want to introduce it on a four-star hero, but uh, yeah, Intelligent Systems is probably about time to bring a Guard 4 around. So let's take a look at Luthier. Don't there he is, and there is his uh, special art. Honestly, again, I think it looks pretty great. I think I like Luthier's art better than uh, I like Zeke's art, to be honest with you. I like that his tome is open. I like that the energy is kind of channeling out from the tome. I like that it's kind of wisping around his hand, so he's controlling it and getting ready to just, you know, fire it off. He has this this very stern look on his face as he's about to attack. All of that kind of goes well, I think. His robes are kind of billowing behind him. It's very nice. It's very nice. All right, and then, of course, we are getting not a mythic hero, which is very exciting. Um, yeah, she needs no introduction. <laughs> Moon's elegance. And of, co of course, we already know, I mean, she is going to be a Lance infantry unit. Um, again, I lament the fact that both of the, her, both she and her sister are infantry and not flyers. I feel like they'd be much cooler as flyers, but maybe that's just me. All right, so Rim Foxy is going to be a 16 might Lance. Grants speed plus three at start of combat. If unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%. Grants plus five to all stats and bonus to all stats during combat equal to current bonus on each of unit stats for one turn. Again, very similar to her sister, and of course she also gains the Pathfinder ability, which, again, similar to her sister. So she's going to be the the Lance equivalent of uh, of Dagger. Dragon Fang for the special, Distant Counter for the A slot, um, Moon Twin Wing, at start of combat if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, inflicts attack speed minus 5 on foe during combat, and also if unit's speed is greater than foe speed, reduces damage from attacks during combat and from AoE specials, uh, excluding rocker area of effect specials by percentage equal to the difference between stats times four max of 40 percent so getting some damage reduction getting some debuff on the enemy um pretty solid seems like she is going to be a pretty speedy unit and that of course does synergize with the fact that her weapon gives her speed plus three uh, attack speed menace for the c slot 
that's going to be very good or very solid. At start of turn, if unit is within four spaces of foe, inflicts attack speed minus six on closest foes through their next action and grants attack speed plus six to unit for one turn. Again, I was just talking about how I think the menace skills are excellent. Attack speed is definitely going to be a coveted one. So it makes sense that it would be on a premium unit like um, like not here as a mythic hero. So again, both she and her sister are essentially two sides of a coin. Um, they're both going to fulfill very similar scenarios. The Pathfinder ability in and of itself has incredible utility on a team. Um, extremely, extremely useful. Um, Dagger, of course, comes with the, um, the Seesaw skill that grants her additional movement tile. Uh, you have not here with the Menace skill. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're going to, I guess, have sort of similar roles, which is nice. I think. I, I don't remember Dagger's complete kit off the top of my head. And I didn't get her. <laughs> I missed out on getting her. I didn't actually get to summon for her. So uh, the art is beautiful in Book 5. I mean, all of the characters, the art is actually pretty gorgeous. And for Knot and Dagger in particular, I think they are exceptional. You can see the the toned muscles in her in her uh, in her art here and how she is just like you know a, a, a full force to be reckoned with she's got that bird of prey behind her trusty and ready uh, as she's kind of leaping forward and taking this big swing so um, love the love the animations in general I like that her special art is is way different, different perspective. She's kind of rearing back. She has almost a almost a knowing look on her face as she's um, she's building up energy at the tip of her spear or her lance. Uh, th that's actually pretty traditional of Kozaki's art, and the, he usually does have the special art be a derivative of the um, the damaged art, or actually vice versa, I guess. Um, so the attacking art is you know on its own, and then the special art and the uh, the damaged art bear similarities but i think she looks great here um never a question as far as the art is concerned for the book five characters i think they look fantastic uh, and then that's just demonstrating the pathfinder ability so again serpent's whispers new story chapter it's pretty darn exciting and fafnir is going to be here of course there was a big uh big reveal big twist there was an actual cg trailer that also dropped today for anybody that didn't watch that please go take a look at it there is more to the evil side of book five than originally uh perceived so uh so we've, we're, we're definitely in for a surprise i think within this book so evaluating the banner as a whole i have to say that it's not the strongest banner out there it's a new hero banner they're not limited in any capacity they are dropping into the regular pool uh, Luthier, I think, as the four-star focus unit, has some decent stuff. But again, he's going to be dropped as a four-star hero uh, into the regular summon pool. Zeke's weapon is minimalistic but solid. I think that it actually is, is a lot better than it first looks, probably, at glance. It looks really barren, but I think it actually... Like, those two things that it has are, are, are pretty strong. At the same time, it doesn't wow me that much. Pala, I think, as far as the regular units are concerned, is probably the standout. I think her weapon is exceptional just in terms of what it does and in terms of the fun factor of what it brings to the character and making her unique. So that alone, I think, brings a lot to the table. Also, her art is pretty fantastic. Uh, and then there's Nod, of course. So Nod, I think, is really the main reason why you're summoning on this banner. Just because you have an opportunity to guarantee yourself a mythic hero, a mythic hero, just by going to the sparking, you get a celestial stone along the way, and any of the other four, five stars and four stars as you uh, make your way to that pity. You know, me personally, I am extremely tempted to summon for Pala. Uh, I may end up summoning for Pala and not, and just try to get both of them as I go up to the spark. Hopefully, get multiple copies of Pala so I can get the red duel flying as well. Not entirely sure, haven't uh, haven't fully committed to that strategy, but uh, I, feel, I feel like that might be what I ultimately do. Just bear in mind, everybody, that summer is around the corner. So next month, there's going to be a summer banner, and then the month after that, there is going to be a summer two banner. We always get two summer banners every year, and those are always orb drainers. So, well, especially for me, I pretty much always spend a lot of orbs during the summer banners. So it's a lot to look forward to. And, uh, you know, we, we have to conserve orbs where we can, naturally. 
But uh, let me know in the comments below if you're excited for this banner, if you're excited for not, the, the guaranteed not, uh, excited for this Valentia banner. A lot of people have been clamoring for a Valentia banner, um, and I think people are going to be excited for these inclusions. Probably not all of the Valentia inclusions that they that fans of Valentia wanted, um, but at least you know getting some game representation there. So hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We thank you all so much for watching and for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really do appreciate it. Certainly hoping you're all staying safe, healthy, secure, and united out there, and wishing the very, very best for you, your family, and your friends. And until next time, let's protect those skies. Thank you.